Hi, my name is Karthik from Design School by WP Algorithm. In this video, we are going to talk about a feature in Dynamic Content Plugin for Elementor called Header Tracker or Tracker Header, however you like to call it. I'll just call it Header Tracker because it seems more natural or logical. Well, make sure you have Dynamic Content Plugin installed and also make sure you have Elementor Pro or maybe you can use any theme such as Astra, OceanWP and so on. So I'll just click on templates, click on theme builder. I have a header built with Elementor Pro. So if I click on edit with Elementor, well, this is the site header. As you can see, it's basically a simple header built with Elementor Pro. It has logo, menu and a search bar. I'll just click on this section. You can give it a name, click on advanced, go to CSS classes and just call it anything. You can give it a name such as my header or you can give a name that starts with your website prefix since my website is dynamic.com I can simply say wpd hyphen header this is all your personal choice well just make sure that the class is unique or wherever you're using this class name make sure that the same set of properties will be defined for them or you don't even need to define them I'll simply call it my header for now and I'll just click on update now if i click on hamburger menu well you can go to any page post or a template and click on the hamburger menu and you find settings for dynamic content for elementor plugin just click on it click on tracker header or header tracker just enable header tracker and first it's asking us to pick a selector for our header i just gave a class of my header since this is the class the tracker will be dot my header so I'll say dot and now I'll type my hyphen header it's basically the class name once I type the class name you can see that the red color button turns to green and that means this is a valid class and the header tracker is active well what exactly is header tracker and you can also choose to apply header tracker on desktop tablet and mobile anyway I'll just hit update well, the header is actually defined to show up on each and every page on my site. So I'm actually in my home page. Now, if I scroll through, nothing seems to happen. But when I scroll up, you can see the header slides in from the top. Well, this is partly because of the reason why we enabled header tracker. But what exactly is happening inside? To know that, I'll just right click on this header. I'll click on inspect. This is a Chrome browser. I can simply resize the header a bit just so we see the classes now watch carefully I'll just click on the cursor and I'll just click on the header itself I'll just click on the header watch what happens to the classes in the header as I scroll through you can see there is a change in classes and at each and every point different classes are being added to the header if i scroll up so you can see the different classes they are tracker header tracker header not bottom tracker header not top tracker header pinned right if i scroll again you can see the classes being changed so basically we have classes that are added dynamically as we scroll through the page if i reach the bottom of the page you can see the tracker header bottom class is added if i reach top of the page you can see the tracker header top is added along with all other classes. Well, what can you do with these classes? Well, since classes are being dynamically added on scroll, you can have scroll based animations. We've talked about CSS animations. You can search on this channel for elementary CSS animations or transitions. I've explained all that, but we'll just take a couple of classes and we'll see how we can use them. So based on the position or the scroll distance, like I said, classes are being added and you don't have to see the inspect menu each and every time. They have a handy reference. So you can see the different classes being added when the scroll distance or when the scroll bar is at a particular point. When you scroll halfway through the page, you can see a tracker header not top, tracker header not bottom and tracker header pinned being added. And when you're scrolling down, tracker header bottom, tracker head pinned are shown when you reach the bottom of the page. Similarly, on other moments, 
you have different classes being added. So you can use this as a handy reference or you can simply right click and inspect and see what are the classes being added at different positions in your header, right? So if I reach the top, I can see the tracker header top class being added. If I scroll through halfway through, I can see the unpinned class. If I scroll halfway above, you can see the pinned class. So whenever the header pops out, there's this tracker header pinned class being added or the class name being added. It's the same thing. So I'll just do or I'll just take a couple of classes. I'll use this reference. So when the header is not top or not bottom and you can see that it is at this particular scrolling distance, I'll use these classes and maybe I'll just apply different properties to the header. So I'll copy these classes. You can also copy it from the inspect window, not a big deal. I'll just copy it from here. Handy documentation. Go to site header. Click on the section. Go to custom CSS or since we've given our header a custom class, you can click on the hamburger menu, click on site settings, scroll down and click on custom CSS. You can add the code here as well. So anyway, so let's start here. My header is the name of the class that we've given and let's use the reference class, which is tracker header not top. Since both of them are at the same level, you don't need a space. There's no space, just use both of them without any space. So dot my header and then dot tracker header not top. I'll maybe just change the background from this to a different gradient. You can check out different CSS transitions that you can apply. I'll just add a sample gradient just to show you. And I'll also add important tag to override properties in case they're not working. I'll hit update. Now the code is updated. I'll close this inspector window. I'll just reload this page so that my custom CSS is loaded. Now we have our header. And just like that, you can see actual header has this background, but since we specified different properties, when the header has this class, these properties will be applied whenever this class is there, right? And just like that. See that? Initially, you have that blue gradient and as I scroll through, since the class is being changed, the header gradient is also changed. And the class that we mentioned was tracker header not top and it is applied when the top of the header is not reached, right? If you have, if you want to apply specific property when the header reaches bottom, you can use tracker header bottom. I'll just use that. So I'll scroll. So whenever tracker header is not bottom, this property will be applied. Property when the tracker header reaches bottom. So when the tracker header reaches bottom, this is a CSS class. I'll give it a top value of maybe 200 pixels just so that we can see it. Let's see if that code applies when the header reaches bottom. I'll refresh the page. Actually see the header when the header reaches bottom. Again, reload just so that the custom code is applied. See that? Now we see the header. And since for not bottom, we have this code. When it reaches bottom, this code won't be applied because at that particular point, that class will not be there. And you can check that out from here, right? And when the bottom is reached, we have set a relative position to the header and it just pops up like that. Even though it's unpinned, we've specified different property for not bottom class or the bottom class. And for not bottom, we have a different property, which is a typical gradient, right? And that's the reason why you see the gradient throughout. And when the header reaches bottom, since this class is being removed when the header reaches bottom, again, you can use this reference, which class will be present at which point. So at top, you'll just have top and pinned classes 
when you scroll a bit you'll have not top not bottom and pinned and when you can actually see the header and when you reach the bottom and when you can actually see the header you'll have these two classes and so on right you so these dotted lines indicate that when the header goes out of bound or when you cannot see it and this solid line means whenever you can see the header and whenever a particular scrolling distance is reached so you can use this in the documentation of dynamic as a reference and just by adding different properties to different classes we are achieving different things.